I bid you good day. Once and always, a fine beginning to our gathering, to our coming together. We come together as one. We express ourselves as many. And then we gather together as one again. And so our gathering today has purpose. And today I bring to you a different, a new topic to unfold for you, for your consideration. Do you know who you live with? Well, perhaps you live of your own accord, in your own home, in your own environment. Perhaps you have a mate, a room mate, a husband, a wife, a parent. But who or what else do you live with? Well, perhaps you live and share your environments with the mineral kingdom, with the plant kingdom, with all other sources of earth awareness or earth consciousness, with the animal kingdom, certainly. And now, who or what else do you share your environment with? You see, you are accustomed to sharing your homes and your workspaces and your outdoor gardens and what it will be with others. And you are aware that you have neighbors by the by. In most cases, someone has shared or occupied the space that you are now occupying before you have. And once you find yourself changing about the color, the decor, the furniture, and even the purpose that a room serves, you begin to forget who or what was there before you were there. So be it. It is indeed your space now. You own it. You rent it. It is yours to call your own. But there is more there than the walls that you call yours, than the flooring that you walk upon, the boundaries that you are accustomed to. There is space. And within the space of that environment, within what you consider the invisible space between here or there, there is much there that you are sharing your environment with. So today we unfold the topic of the unseen realms that share the space that you share with others. So I will define for you some of what you share your space with so that you will come well accustomed to it. You first share your space with certain energies that are yours to define. These are those things or peoples that you place into your environment that sustain your energy. For instance, even food, supplements that you take, these sustain you. So these give off a certain energy. You share your environment with these energies. Perhaps you have a bottle of vitamins in your cupboard. Besides the space that the bottle takes up, there is the energy given off by this supplement, given to enhance you, its ability to call you and remind you and say perhaps it is time to reinvigorate yourself. So there is an energy associated with food, with vitamins. Perhaps there is a favorite book that you are sharing your time with now. It also has a space, a field around it, and you share your environment with that. There are also all manner of energies upon different spectrums, different dimensions within your environment. You may think of them as positive or negative energies. You may feel very energized as you enter a certain room, less energized or stagnant as you enter another room. All of these are energies that influence you, interact with you. Seen and unseen energies, aspects of nature that are sharing that space with you. Forces also share your environment with you. 
Now, forces are also aspect of nature, but they interact with you in a different way. A force, as the name implies, is a bit more forceful than an energy. And so a force causes you to feel a certain way or even think a certain thought. While an energy might influence you in a certain way, a force would say to you, no, no, that is not right at all, or we will have to do something about that. Or the moment that I can, I will change the color of paint in this room. You see, it becomes more instantaneous. The force interacts with you to a greater degree. The energies are more subtle, the forces a little bit more bold. Both of these interact within certain spectrums of energy. They interact with light and space, even light and how it dances about you, can either warm you or cool you, accelerate you, or ask for additional rest. So all of the forces of nature are included in this discussion. Energies and forces similar to one another, both enacted as part of nature on your behalf, indoors or out of doors. But for the sake of our discussion now, we are speaking of your environments. You also share your environment with polarities. Polarities are like energies, but they gather, they accumulate, perhaps in a corner, perhaps underneath a rug. Polarities accumulate and cause you as well to linger with a certain thought, to think something every time you come near that part of the room, every time you touch that object, every time you look out that window. It is polarized, and as you come nearer that aspect of the field, you feel one thing or another, think something or another. It tends to move you toward the positive or to the negative, and then you find that you need to reset yourself. Certain corners or rooms are a little bit like that. Perhaps you have accumulated a great many things there. The corner that says, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. It isn't always that you are simply dallying. It is that you do not wish to get to what is in that corner. Polarities also gather around certain objects that you have had. For instance, if you have a stack of bills to pay that you have not gotten to and are uncertain about, there is polarity associated with that. There are thought patterns and also the forces at work accumulating next to these as well. So it is important to consider what you have brought into your environment or what exists there already that is a very polarizing force. If you live in a building and it overlooks something that does not please you, that aspect of the room of your environment is polarizing your thoughts in a certain direction as well, and that is occupying space in your environment. So truly, we are not only speaking of the kinds of thoughts that occupy space within you. We are speaking here of those things, thoughts, energies, and more, as we will soon discover, that actually share the space with you. They live with you. Invited and uninvited guests and energies. We continue. You share your environment as well with relationships. Of course, you know that you have relationships with living beings, your mates, your roommates, or what it will be as we have discussed earlier. You are in relationship with them. Now, these relationships also have polarity. You feel good about it. You do not feel good about it. It is stagnant. It is live. It is creative. It is thoughtful. It is less than thoughtful. You are in relationship with many different aspects of those whom you share your environment with. Now, remember, those other aspects that we have spoken of already, they are also interacting 
not only with you, not only with the space that you occupy, but also with all those things that you are in relationship with. So those polarizing forces act upon the relationship and your thoughts and feelings about the relationship. The forces that cause you to feel strongly one way or another, they are also then acting upon that relationship. You are also in relationship with those things that you may have brought into your environment or have had there so long that you do not remember them quite well. Perhaps something that you have had as a child that brings to you a very fond memory. You are in relationship with that. Your thoughts, your feelings are alive in the space that it occupies, the space within and the space without. Perhaps there is some object that you have not got rid of. Well, it was given to me as a gift. I do not like it so very much, but it wouldn't be the polite thing to do to give it away. Or it is worth quite a bit. I can't simply give that away. It is true I don't feel very strongly about it, but I cannot quite give it away now, can I? Well, you are in relationship with the thoughts associated with that, and you are in relationship with the thing or the person that brought that to you. All of these exist within your environment now. And to continue now, halfway through our list or so, you share your environment with entities. What is an entity? It conjures up a fearful thought. What do you mean I share my environment with entities? Oh no. I have saged, you know. I sage once a day or every week. I have beautiful crystalline minerals and friends and plants to absorb any negativity. Oh no, I don't share my environment with entities. Well, let's examine this just a little bit. An entity is a little bit like a fragment. It is a little bit like a residue that belonged at one time to something or someone that was very important to that environment. That is why it is still associated with the environment or that important person or thought did not take with them all of their belongings when they vacated the environment and presented it to you. When you move into an environment, it seems to you an empty box. It is vacant for you to do with as you will. And it is in the third dimension, not a stick of furniture, bare to the walls. But what about the space? Space is occupied much of the time. Dimensionally speaking, energetically speaking, there are all manner of activity taking place. So entities, then, are the fragmented aspects that belong to important moments. And in some way, in some degree, they are still important. And they are still present. An entity is not the same as a dead person or a ghost. Perhaps we will address that at a later time. An entity is more than an energy because it belonged at one point to something very conscious, something very aware, but it was discarded. Now perhaps it was a memory, for instance, and someone at one point said, oh, that is a very bad memory, that is a very poor memory. No, I think I can leave that one behind. And so they do. Perhaps it is a very joyous memory. And you have thought that thought so many times. And at some point it becomes replaced by a newer thought, a newer memory that is even more pleasing. And the other one was simply not accommodated. Entities then exist they continue to exist. 
Sometimes a being, perhaps even such as yourself, leaves a certain aspect of itself that makes it entity, that makes it whole, and says, I'll come back to collect this later. Thinking that later might be a few minutes later, a few days later, and then it ends up being a few lifetimes later. You see, humanity does not always plan for the next moment or even the next life. And so entities then also are part of the environment. They might be your old thoughts and concerns. They might be your old relationships that you have not dismissed, that you have not completed, those that you long for or those that in some way still exist. Unspoken words, incomplete thoughts and experiences. So all of these are also called entities. They are more than thought forms because they almost have a life of their own. You can't quite seem to dismiss them, and whenever you think about them, there they are again, just as alive as if it was the last moment. And whether they are yours or someone else's, these entities are still part of an environment, or at least can be. You also share your environments with essences. An essence is something a little bit different than an entity. An essence is a little bit like a signature. Imagine that someone came to visit you and stayed for, well, long enough that the room seemed as if it was their room, or long enough that they made themselves to home. They leave behind a signature, some part of them that says, I was here. Perhaps it was even the previous owner of where you are. They modeled things in such a certain way that it is obvious, oh yes, that was their doing. One day I'll change that. But right now, it still has their signature. So these essences also share a certain amount of space. You recognize them as yours, but not yours. These signatures that are still in that environment, again, all of the other aspects that we have described previous act upon these. All of these different forces of nature act and relate one to the other. So an essence can relate to an entity. It can find a signature, a residue. An entity can be in relationship with the forces and the energies and the signatures. So you see, just as dust, in essence, gathers together, although it began as one little particle, separate and distinct from all of the others, all of these different forces of nature can also, at times, gather together. Sometimes they gather together for very important reasons, and they can be of great benefit to you. So as we continue this discussion, do not think to yourself immediately of what you must begin to get rid of at the next possible opportunity, what you can buy from the supermarket shelf to rid yourself, entity be gone. Because at times, and I will describe to you why, they can be of great benefit. But, of course, because we are then speaking of polarities and such, when these energies come together at times in ways that do not, well, flow with the energy of the environment, then they can become a tad discordant. And then you might find yourself for a time, perhaps in a bad or grumpy mood, in a certain room, at a certain time of the day, without even knowing why, thinking all the while, I wonder what's the matter with me, am I coming down with something? Why has my mood changed so much suddenly? And of course the thought would not arrive to you, oh, it must be what is invisibly sharing my space with me. And yet sometimes that is exactly the case, because you have stumbled right into a field of energy. Perhaps all you have done is walk across the room to the bookcase at the other end of the room, but you have walked through a field of energy that has now influenced you, 
cause you to think or move or feel or do or don't, as the case may be. Along the same conversation, then, it is appropriate that we would speak of spirits. Some homes are inhabited not only by the physical, but by spirits as well. A spirit, again, is not the same as a ghost. A spirit is, in essence, more than an entity. So a spirit is a force that is alive and well. A spirit is associated with another being or perhaps your own being. It is a stronger presence than an entity. In order for an entity to make itself known to you, it must in some way attach itself to something. It must, as we have said, interact with the forces and the energies that are already present. But a spirit does not necessarily need to do this. It can, but it does not need to. So a spirit, then, for essence, shares the environment with you. It has a certain amount of life force of its own. Sometimes the very older homes, those that have been standing for a very long time, or those that have served a great community purpose, those that have had many come and go, sometimes these have a certain amount of spirits associated with them. A spirit is that which is a fragment, an aspect of something which was very alive, very present in that environment. And again, something or someone did not take all of their energy or all of their belongings with them. And so if someone has forgotten some of this, sometimes the life force is so strong that it can call to the energy or the being that left it there and cause it to come looking for it, calling for it, drawing it to oneself. But sometimes the life force is simply not strong enough to do that. And so in that case, the spirit that is left over, left over life force, must find purposeful engagement for it where it is. Remember now, it is vitality. It is life force. We are not here speaking of disembodied spirits and like that. It is energy, vitality. It is purposeful prana. It lives. It exists. But temporarily, it is not attached to a being or a project or a purpose. Now, this is why I have described to you that there are times in which these energies can certainly be of benefit to you. So, in the case of both entities and spirits, because these are the most conscious, the most alive, the most well, they must, in essence, follow a certain law. And that law is that they must serve the third dimension and that which occupies the space that they also occupy, that they also share. So you see, then, both an entity and a spirit, then, must serve the third dimension. Why? Because the third dimension is the most dense. It is what the walls are made of. It is what you have pledged your life path in front of. And so that which is the dominant or densest force draws upon the life force or the vitality of that which is lighter, which can then be engaged in its service. So whether you are aware of it or not, entities and spirits are in some ways working for your benefit, working in your favor. Now here we must take care and explain a little bit further. These benefits that serve you, you may not immediately recognize as a benefit. You see, 
If, for instance, using a very poor example, you were to trip over your lower coffee table, thereby injuring your ankle and needing to rest for a week, perhaps you would not think, oh, that was not a very good spot of luck on my part. I must not have been paying attention to where I was going. But perhaps the energies in the space, knowing that if you did not take an almost immediate rest, something else that was not as simple as a rest would have come to call. And so in some way, using the very forces of nature to your benefit, on your behalf, but in some ways unbeknownst to you, the forces of nature are at work in and to your benefit, but without always your knowing. Now truly, the example I have given to you is the poorest of them all. It is also that some thoughts that you may be thinking over and over again, perhaps a worry, perhaps a concern, these vitalities, these life forces can gather in your favor and literally show you how the thoughts that you have, the worrisome thoughts, do not have a basis that would bring them about to reality. And so again, remember, the entities, the spirits have at their disposal the ability to interact with energies and forces and polarities in your benefit so that they can reveal to you in one way or another that you might not have thought of how to shift, how to change, how to grow, how to create. So the space around you is very full at times. And at times, it moves easily and freely, just as sometimes your home or your desk may be very cluttered. And then you go about the process of cleansing it or you of your thoughts, beginning the process again. And so it is the same with entities and all of these forces of nature. The very vitality that they are directs them, and they come and they go, at will or at your will as well. If you had made it so certain, your mind, that you would not share your space with anything or anyone or any energy or any force, Indeed, there are ways to dismiss these completely. But can you be completely certain? Can you be completely certain that your environment is germ-free? Can you do such a spectacular job of dusting your environment so that not one particle of dust would fall upon it again? Imagine that you dismiss every force of nature that you share your environment with and then you go out, perhaps to a party, to an engagement at a friend's house. Well, are you so certain that you would not bring something home with you? Something left over from that environment that was unclaimed? You see, so the process is ongoing. You cannot always be certain what you are walking into. The invisible forces of nature there is space between here and there, between one wall and the next, between here and there, between one thought and the next. You engage with a variety of different thoughts and energies, which is the next thing that you share your environment with. You share your environment. The space in your environment is also occupied with thoughts, ideas, Thought forms. Surely you have heard the word thought form. Well, where do thought forms dwell then? They dwell in the space that you give them. If they are your thought forms, they dwell in your environment. So a thought form is something that you have thought about as well so many times that it now has a little bit of shape. It has a little bit of form. The minute you conjure that thought, out comes everything related to that thought. 
all the plans related to that thought. Perhaps it is a thought relative to how you will take yourself elsewhere just as soon as you have the funds to do so. So there are all manner of thoughts associated with that that have now taken form. They have taken shape. Certainly you may reshape them, remake them, but they already exist as thought. You are improving upon those thoughts, shaping them, making it better. Perhaps you are working on an idea, an invention, a creation. These share your space with you, whether or not they are in the physical or not. They are in that environment with you. You also share your environment with what I will call prisms of the past. Prisms of the past are affected by how much light comes into or through the prism. The more light that comes through the prism, the more broad the spectrum, resplendent the color that comes out the other side. So imagine that you have had a small to-do with a family member many years ago, and it has gone unhealed or unforgotten. When your thought forms are triggered, and that thought comes to mind, if there is only a small smidgen of light that has been added to that, then the spectrum of light that comes out the other side will be a small one as well. There it will sit for a time longer. If, on the other hand, based upon your own benefits of all of the energies that you work with, of all of the good works in your own favor, in all of the ways in which you have opened your inner eyes and your outer eyes and your heart, if all of these then become part of the moment, then the prism of the past opens itself more, more light flows through it, out comes the spectrum of light in a broader, brighter capacity, changing the present moment and, of course, being of benefit to everything else that you are sharing your environment with. So earlier we said that energies and entities and spirits and all of the others can coalesce, come together to be of aid to you, to be of assistance to you to be of benefit to you. But of course, there are ways in which you are of benefit to all of these as well. So the more light that you bring into space, the more light that you pass through the prism that you are. All of this resplendent light made out of a very particularly fine quality moves into and through every aspect of your life and your environment, invigorating it, enlivening it, so that it in turn can enliven you as well. So here you have now, at least for your consideration, some of what you share your environment, your space with, those seen and unseen fields, vortices of energy that are yours. And of course, sometimes they are inconspicuous and invisible to view, and sometimes you are aware of it, or someone else will point out something to you that you were not aware of before. With this understanding, then, you have choices, you know. You have choices with how you wish to engage your space, how and with whom you wish to share your space. And the more consciously aware you are of it, the more that it and you will improve. And in the spirit of the ways that all of nature works, you can use all of this to your benefit. So now as the second part, of our discussion. I will give to you then what are the best cases for maintaining the very best environments, not intact, not unlived in or vacant, but so that they will all be full, 
so that your space, full as it is, will all be engaged in your favor, in your behalf. So that when you wish to be silent, the silence will be filled with goodness. So that when you wish to sing out the song of joy from within, you will have accompaniment in your background. So that you need not worry about what came through the door last night or this morning, or how to clean it up or restore it. And so now we begin. The first way is to be as natural as you can in your own environment. This means to live as close to nature as is natural for you. Now, in this case, we are not speaking of the outdoors nature. We are speaking of your very own personal nature, what is natural for you. For instance, a, an appropriate time for you to wake and sleep. Each one has what is natural for them. Of course, the dictates of one's job or career or family concerns may change this. But as close as possible to live with what is most natural for you. If there are colors that are most comfortable for you, to live with these as naturally as possible. Whether it is to dress yourself in these, or in terms of your personal decor, or even in terms of what you can have in your immediate vicinity to share your space with. As close to what is naturally interesting to you, whether that is naturally stimulating or naturally calming, or both live as much in comfort to what is nature and natural for you. If you are sharing your environment with others, then of course, at times there are compromises that must be brought forward. And so then it is that there must be at least some part of the environment that is yours to say, this is for my natural self, for my natural state of being. And so along with that, you may wish to have a space to call your own. A space to call your own within the space that you already have. Now, that may seem to you redundant, but you will see how quickly this is the kitchen, and that is the bedroom, and this is where this goes, and that is where that goes, and before you know it, everything belongs to the place, to the space. Everything has its place except for you. And how did that happen? It was your space, after all. So somewhere within your environment, there must be a space to call your own, and that space must be kept not only as natural as possible, according to your own nature, as we have said, but also it must be given room to breathe. If it is that your space is a personal house plant or tree, or what it will be, it must then be given a center space, the most amount of adequate sunshine, the best position in the house, if that is what you are calling your space. If you are calling your space a desktop, then that must be given priority, and it must be kept clean enough that it can breathe. When something breathes well, it breathes in light. It breathes in creativity. It breathes in restoration. So even those things that you may think of as inanimate are also symbolic of you. They are representations of you, what you give yourself, what you allow yourself. And while you may find it interesting or best to offer the best parts of yourself to others, at times the restorative quality would indicate that you must give to yourself the best that you can. Give yourself room to breathe and a space of your own, even if it is symbolic in nature, but hopefully more than a symbol. We'll say to you as well, speak to your environment, engage your environment, both silently and aloud, as a matter of fact. Speak to all of the forces that we have spoken about earlier. Thank you for sharing this environment with me. 
I understand that the space that is around me is not vacant. That space is indeed dimensional and active. And so I receive you and enlist your support in this concern for that project. I am aware that all of these forces of nature can, may act on my behalf. And indeed I am grateful and enlist your support now. Of course you may do this silently, but here and there it would also be appropriate to lovingly touch the space just in front of you as if there was something or someone there. If it will make you feel better, you can take a good look around and make sure no one sees you do this. It can be at a time of your own choosing when there are no one else about. Take a moment to touch the space in front of you as if there is something there that cares very deeply about the same space about the same environment and about the things that you care about. Touch a wall in the same way. That environment, after all, is keeping you safe or warm or cool. Reach out to that which is in and around you. It will say to you, well, in the next case, to both disengage and create. To disengage means just that. If there are thoughts and ideas that no longer serve you truly, disengage from these. Do not plug into the same wall or the same thought. Everything you have plugged into that wall has burned out. Everything you have plugged into that thought has also burned out. Disengage from it. You do not need that electrical charge any longer. Perhaps it is more than a thought. Perhaps it is a certain object. Whenever you look upon it, yes, it served me well then, but it doesn't serve me now. It is time to give it away, sell it for what it will be. Of course, this is at times difficult for humanity again. It will begin to think of what it is worth, why it can or cannot disengage from it. But again, here we speak of that which would be best in all cases. Once you disengage from some thing, whether it is a thought or a thing, take care that you do not rush to replace it with something else. It is difficult at times to live with something that is empty. Better to think about it instead as a very creative space something that is a creative canvas. And when just the right thing or thought or activity presents itself, that is when you will engage with it. Until then, you are the proud owner of a blank canvas, something that is priceless. It is priceless because it is yours, because anything can go on it. Anything can be added to it. And so choose wisely and creatively then. Employ the materials of both man and earth. Use those things that are in and about you. If you have purchased something very useful and very practical, well, take it down off the shelf and give it a little luster by using it. Employ those things of man and employ those things of earth. If you have collected some perhaps beautiful crystalline mineral specimens. Yes, you may observe their beauty upon a shelf, but these are working tools, you know. Employ them. Give them a purpose. If they are known to be activators of peace, then give them an assignment. Send them to your neighbors and say, activate peace there. You may return here in all of your energies, But from this hour to that hour, you will be at work. I am at work and you will be at work as well. Employ all those things that are part of your life. Employ feelings. Cause your feelings to be very useful things. Cause the feelings that you know are in line, aligned well within you, to work on, activate other feelings that are either dormant or, as yet, 
unsatisfactory in some way. You do this by engaging the very energies and forces that we spoke of earlier to work with you in all of the feelings. So you need not decide what you have done well or what you have not accomplished well. You allow all those things of man and energy, man and earth, to work in your favor. We'll tell you as well that here and there you may use fragrance to dismiss or to invite or even to enhance a certain frequency, you see? Now, fragrance, like the fragments or signatures that we spoke of elsewhere, had a very nice residue. And so you may engage fragrance to bring together in harmony everything that is occupying your space. Fragrance as a force of unification. In this case, I will tell you that vanilla, for instance, has a very unifying feeling to all. It nurtures all things. It allows all things to feel and know that they belong. It will help them to coalesce. Likewise, if you wish clarity, mental clarity in all things, all things to stand up, in essence, to their duties or to their responsibilities, you may work with clothes. And these you may simply take a few between your palms and rub them very lightly and then let that fragrance be carried into and through your entire body. Of course, there are many other fragrances that may be to your liking. Cinnamon as well, you will find, will warm the environment. It will warm a truth. If you are undecided about a certain matter, cinnamon may assist you, not in simply polarizing you to one thought or the other so that you are still in doubt, should I or shouldn't I, is this the better decision or that one. It will give to you a certainty, a warmth of knowing, yes, that's it, I'm on the right track, I can feel it now, I can sense it now. So indeed, sweet ones, use fragrance in your environments as well. Again, I will tell you whenever possible, open your windows and open your doors. Humanity now lives in many controlled environments, temperature-controlled environments. There are flies outside, there are contaminants outside, there is nature and natural things outside. I do not say to you, let them in, I say to you, let the energies in. So let the breeze cross path, cross pollinate. Certainly you know that the bees must cross pollinate at certain times to be most effective to bear fruit. Certainly you might imagine that a breeze coming from one direction or the other can do wonders for a personal environment, moving, lifting, changing, enhancing. The same with a door. You live behind closed doors. Indeed, live behind the closed doors, but perhaps even for a time, allow it to come forward, the energy that walks in through the door. Leave the door open just a little bit longer than you would normally. Let something that works with you come in to your environment. Let opportunities flow into your environment. Then, if you like, you can seal them again. And I will say to you, Take a broom. Take a broom, sweet ones, and sweep. You would be surprised with the activity of sweeping, the motion of sweeping. Two hands upon a broom. Two hands upon a stick that sweeps out dust or out of the corners, moves energy, polarities out of the corners, out into the center where it can be seen, where it can be exposed where it can be disposed of. Yes, you have many fancy electronic appliances to do just this. But here and there, take a broom to hand and see if the motion does not instill within you some thought, 
some creative thought of what you would like to bring into your life, sweep into your life or out of your life. It is a very simple suggestion. You will see what it will offer to you. We'll say to you as well, when possible, share the space with another in a purposeful activity. Come together again in union with someone else for a purposeful activity to share an idea, to ignite a passion, to share even a simple meal together or a cup of tea. Let the moment be an inspiring one. Notice how most of the time when you come together with others, it is far too easy to see, to state what is wrong. What is wrong with the moment? What is wrong with the day? What is wrong with the life? And then the other will share the same. What is wrong in the world? What is wrong in the government? What is wrong in the system and the other? Indeed, but perhaps you already knew that when you arrived. And while it is appropriate to share that and console one another, it is also appropriate then to use that scale, that polarity spectrum, to move energy, to use the very forces of nature, to move them in the other direction then. See, if there is an elephant sitting upon your lap, perhaps you can use some of what we have discussed and move it at least off of your lap and into the next room, if not out of the environment altogether. Lastly, restate the obvious. Restate the obvious. You already know it is your environment. It is my home. I live here. Well, yes, that is obvious. Perhaps you can also say, this is my home. I live here. To restate the obvious in such a way as it becomes new, renewed for you, will have very great, very surprising results for you. This is where I am sleep, you might say. This is where I conduct several activities. This is where I sit when I wish to relax. And you will find that even more you will relax in that environment. This is where a meal comes from, the very satisfying meals that I am sometimes able to have. You see, all of this is indeed restating the obvious, but in a different way. This is my space. I have created the space. I can recreate the space. I share this space with other forces and energies, with other beings and entities. I draw all of these together now in the spirit of unity. Let all things be as they are meant to be. Let all things belong as they are meant to belong. Let all things and energies find their rightful place within and without. Let the space be a harmonious one. Very well, sweet ones. We have explored together a different topic. Now, look about your environments, all of them indoor environments and outdoor environments. They are yours. This is your world. This is your earth. Allow me to restate the obvious. It is your environment. It is your earth. Your thoughts created and recreated daily. Your thoughts give it life. Your thoughts enhance it, direct it, allow it to be and to become. It is your earth that is evolving, and as it evolves, humanity evolves with it. It is made of all things, of man and earth and heaven. All these things are yours. They are made of matter and you matter. What you think matters. What you do matters. 
everything matters. Indeed, sweet ones, until the next moment brings us together, I bid you good day. <laughs>